everyone! Right, so today we're going to be doing some inks. Yay! Loads of colours. You can see I have my rainbow section over here of ink colours that I will be using. And I'll run through those colours in a moment. But first of all, I'm going to just have a chat about, obviously, a reference image. Which is by Brian Mann. Pexels, royalty free. Check them out. We're going to be looking at these two crabs which I thought was super cute. Now, um do this because I'm going to be making this a bit wet I've gone for quite a high grade cartridge paper this is like a 240 GSM paper I prefer the cartridge with the inks because um, it's a little bit smoother surface you can get the hot pressed watercolor paper at 300 GSM which is great but it's more money so being a bit cheaper I went for this one because I thought it would work just as well um, so you need your paper, I'm just using an A4 sheet here, you could go bigger if you wanted to, it's going to make looser brush marks and can be quite nice for bleeds, but you know, it's all about time and um, obviously money, because you're going to get through your inks more, the bigger it is. Then I've got obviously a HP pencil, a sharpener and a party rubber to get the drawing down, which I'm going to go through in a moment. Um, I've got some a palette that I'm going to use for my inks. Now this is, of course, anyone who knows me, my joyous love of Ferrero Rochers. I wouldn't mind being obviously paid my weight in Ferrero Rochers for a commission if anyone's out there and willing to do so. Um, this is great, especially for inks, because it's got lots of little pockets, so it means that the ink sits in there and it doesn't mix with other colours. It's a lot easier to control, so it's great for inks, it's great for loads of colour mixing across the board, whether you're doing acrylics, oils, whatever. Um, it's a handy little setup. I'm surprised no palette companies have actually come up with this. Took a chocolate company, but less said about that, probably the better. Then I've got a selection of brushes, um, some uh, larger ones, then some smaller. I even might have a finer one for the detail towards the end. I'll grab in a moment. Now you'll notice that all these brushes are synthetic hair, which is really good. It's a nice soft synthetic hair, it'll pick up the ink, smooth it along into the water and do really well. And it also means that you can wash out the end, the brush is really hardy, and you don't get any lines or brush marks. If you're starting to get lines or brush marks in your um, paint, inks even, if we're on inks, that makes complete sense. It's either one or two things, your hair is too stiff for your brush, or you're not making your paper wet enough. So you need to try those and see what happens. Now the other thing I also have is a white candle, which I'm gonna use for a little bit of a resist technique rather than the masking fluid. I have seen so many tragic accidents with the masking fluid and I've actually accidentally poured it over myself before. Um, so today I thought I'd just play it safe and go with a candle. You know, how dangerous is a candle when you're painting and just marking it on paper? It's not, it works really well. Um, I also have my little water spray bottle which can be really good for bleeding and of course a water pot to put all my water in and dilute my inks down because these are acrylic inks and acrylic inks are really really strong they always need diluting with water which is good because it means like they last forever which is even good because they cost a lot of money <laughs> You'll find that um, a lot of my inks here are the FW from Daler. It's just because I, I rather like the colour ranges and that. I do have a Liquitex there, and I also have a Winsor and Newton as well, which are great. Um, if you want something that's more brighter and less opaque, the FW and the Liquitex inks will give that. If you want something a little bit more translucent, so thinking stained glass, then the Winsor & Newton drawing inks will give you that. So it's all personal taste. Now, I'll go through my colours because I know everyone is going to ask me. The yellow I have here is uh, a brilliant yellow. Okay, so there's a brilliant yellow. There is a flame orange. You have a flame red. Well, I have a flame red, you don't. Um, a dioxin purple. I have a Prussian blue, I also have a olive green, and then I've just got a standard permanent black, non-washable. Okay, so oh, that's my colour range. Now I'm going to put the inks and the brush to one side, and we're going to quickly go through the drawing fast of the, of the crabs, because that's going to be the most important bit that everything is going to sit on. Give me a moment, I'll quickly move things around, and then we'll go on to the next stage. Right, so, I'm back. 
we're gonna draw the crabs. Now, normally, you know, when I'm drawing and I'm telling everyone to draw, I'm saying, you know, you have to break it down into the basic structures. We're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna see how good your hand-eye coordination and your visual memory is with this technique. It should prove interesting, if not a laughable experience. First of all though, always remember that your paper has to match the aspect ratio. Now, with this, the crabs are a little bit longer and thinner, so I've put my paper landscape rather than the portrait version. Don't get caught into the portrait one. Um, you'll find you'll get a little bit of a stretch with this because it is more land straight. She says landscape. Okay, so let's get going. I've got my HP pencil, nice and sharp. Um, and I'm holding towards the end. Now the trick with this type of drawing is that your eye should be generally on the, the reference image more than anything else, more than your piece of paper that you're drawing. Your pencil should also be at quite a low angle. So you can see I'm holding it at the end which means that I'm using this underlie, underside section of the pencil rather than this way up and drawing straight down. You'll find that your pencil lines will be a lot softer and easier to remove if you make any mistakes. You'll also find by holding the pencil this way and it's longer, you'll get more longer fluid line marks, which is key. Especially when doing something organic like crabs or fishes or animals or even people, because people are organic, so we better put them in the list. Now, I am going to freestyle draw this onto here without measuring. Um, just by keeping my eye on the picture and keeping my pencil moving and I want to try and keep the lines loose and built up and squiggly so first of all I'm just going to run it through in my head before I put it on the paper I'm going to look at how close these two crabs are to one another and I'm looking at generally the big area of mass is here and here so if I can get those two bits in the right position everything else should fall into place the other thing I'm looking at is how much room I need above which is nearly a whole shell width to make sure that I can get the arms in on claws and below. So you can see here, this is roughly about a third of your height. Now you might find it easier to mark that out. Um, so you can measure it if you wanted to. That looks pretty good to me. That's about, you can see that one, two, three. Gives me enough room. Okay. Then once I've got that, I am away um, and I'm going slightly more to the right because I need that room on the left to get the other crab in and because I've got the paper landscape it shouldn't be too much of a problem so I'm holding my pencil and I'm gonna just start drawing and I'm keeping my eye on my reference image I'm looking back occasionally but I'm generally doing this very fast very squiggly and checking how much room I need on everything. So you can see here, I'm looking at angles. Then I'm going to come down and go into the other crab. Now I'm looking at this gap between here. You can see how scrappy my lines are. Now I'm getting a bit darker than you probably should be going because I want you to be able to see it on the camera. You need to be softer than I am here. And I've got to get his head in here. Now I've got his claws coming over there. And that's swiping around here. Sorry for the running commentary. Oh, and I've got another rotten cold. I don't know where I picked them up from. Okay, so it should look something like this. Okay, so you can see that I've got the bare bones down now of where I want everything to be. And then I'm going to slow my hand down and I'm going to start working up a little bit more of the detail. I'm still trying to be fairly soft on my pencil lines. And I'm just building up a little bit more thickness of the claws. I'm looking at any shape of the shell so I can see this arch coming down here. Okay, and I can see that leg sticking out around here. And start bringing over my sections the arm and get the other claw just coming up in here and his head right over there. Oh, it might be her head. I'd actually do the difference between crabs, I don't know. 
so immediately you can see that my lines are getting thicker. It reminds me a lot of the Quentin Blake kind of drawing that we're going to be doing next week. You, you feel into it next week, week after. It's one week coming up, and I'm looking at Quentin Blake at some time in the future. Um, and the squiggliness and the feeling into the shapes. Okay, and trusting your instincts. So a lot of you do not trust yourself. You need to just go with it worry so much about getting it perfect. So you can see there, I've got the two crabs fundamentally. They're sitting on my paper, they're not falling off. Um, the spacing looks pretty good. And then once I've got that, then I need to slow my hand down, my pencil, and start getting in my crisper, accurate lines of detail. So I can see like where it indents out of the shell how that indent as it comes back out fits onto that claw that pokes up around there uh, and then I'm kind of drafting in that shell. Now a lot of students get confused at this time um, on which line they want because you've got a lot of lines so by bringing your hand down that pencil you should be getting a slightly darker line. Not really hard dark because remember you will probably need to rub out some of this. You're not a robot, you're a human being, you're going to make some errors but a nicer, crisper, darker line so you know what you want. If you are finding it tough, you can always get your pussy rubber and take some of it out. Okay, so you can see how that would mature into this type of drawing. Now, I've still got my scrappy lines that you can see here. So I'm going to take my pussy rubber and go around and clean it up because this is fundamentally the drawing I want now before I start working on my inks. Once you put inks over the top of pencil lines, you will not be able to remove them. So remove any marks or errors that you do not want and make sure your drawing is nice and crisp and linear. It should look like it's a colouring in book drawing. Right, so with that, you can see I've lost a little bit of the Christmas of Chris, Christmas, Christmas of my lines. I'm just going to go over and draft them in and clean it up a little bit more. The more refined and accurate the drawing at this stage, the better the painting's going to come out. Right, so you can see here, um, I'm just adding in some details. Now I've refined my drawing. I'm trying to keep it very crisp and clean and linear. Uh, make sure I'm removing any guidelines. So do double check your light um, because sometimes if you're using light it can bounce off the white paper and you can miss certain patches of guidelines. Good light is required for good drawing. Okay, and that looks pretty good. That looks pretty decent. Now the other thing that you do have to remember when doing something like this is the background. Otherwise they're going to be two crabs floating around in space. So start to draft in your background um, and here we've got quite strong shadows. So I'm just kind of looking at the shadowy lines. Now mine is not perfect by any means but I'm just kind of trying to knock it out very quickly for you to see how this works. Okay, so that should look, look roughly like this. Then we get to the really fun, exciting part, which is obviously the colour mixing. So, let me bring my colours back. Okay, so I've got a piece of tissue and some water as well. Um, water is incredibly important when dealing with inks. They need to be diluted, the surface needs to be wet, or you're going to get really crisp brush marks. And I've brought back my cam candle. So, before we do anything, you need to take your white candle and you need to mark on your drawing anywhere you want it to stay white. Now this will not give you a pure white. This will give you like a really weird textured patchy white result, which looks more natural if you ask me. Um, it's, it's not suitable if you're gonna do like a moon or a sun because you need a bit more of crispness. 
but for something like this where you're getting a texturized surface with the light bouncing off it it works quite well so I'm going to take my wipe my white candle and it's usually easy if you've got a smaller one than this and I'm going to start drawing it onto the surface where I want to create a white reflection so remember don't try and catch any of the graphite the graphite will rub off and stain the paper you do need to be careful and you do need to apply quite a lot of downward pressure on the areas that you want it to do it on you might find certain candles are better than others because it all depends on the paraffin wax within the candle and sometimes I, uh, I've sharpened candles as well to a point so it's easy to control the area that you're applying the candle wax to okay all right once you've done that you just need to lift off any bits of candle wax this one's gone everywhere but um, generally lift that off and we'll work into it so now it's a really exciting part always have a spare piece of tissue when working with inks or watercolors so that you can blot out any accidents that you make have multiple different size brushes and have a few different colored inks now I've probably gone to the extreme with my ink range but um, I wanted to make this quite, you know, quirky. So I'm going to take my yellow with inks, just the same as working with watercolours, work light to dark. Taking some yellow in my Ferrero Rocher box. I'm taking a little bit of orange and a little bit of red. I'm going to keep it simple and just work with these lighter tones to start off with. <laughs> now, I'm going to work in the biggest areas just to get a feel for how much ink I want in there. I am going to take my water spray bottle. You have to be careful if you do it by water spray bottle, it is going to go beyond the boundaries of your linear drawing. If you want it to be more accurate, you would take a brush and you would paint water exactly where you want the colour to go. So it's, it's kind of your preference on how kind of loose you want the picture to be. Now I'm going to go for a, a little bit more of a looser fun quirky approach. I've squirted my shell, I've taken my brush and I've got a number 10 here. I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow. I'm not diluting it this time because I'm putting it directly in the water. Now this means two things. First of all, I can spray it and play around with it to bleed outwards into different areas. Um, so which can be fun. And it shouldn't mean that you get any brush marks because the water acts like a little mini reservoir to hold in the paint. I'm then picking up some orange and bleeding that in. And then I'm going to just wash my brush out and then I'm going to squeeze it through my fingers, take off the excess. I'm going to add a little bit of red in there as well. Now the red is staying still a little bit, you get a little bit of bleed, but if I want more, if I squirt it with some water, or I get a brush and add in a little bit of water with the brush, that will also do it. The more water, the more uncontrollable the pigment moves, so do keep that in mind. You can see how the candle wax is stopping the ink from going over here. I'm getting a little bit of a run down there, so I'm going to get my tissue, just take it off, just like that, and I might add a little bit more yellow, just for some fun, oh you can see how that works, now for the arms, I'm going to take some clean water on a, a brush, and I'm going to just spread that over the area where I want that and I'm going to do the same approach so I'll take the yellow, dab in where I can see the yellow and where I want the yellow to be you can see this is a little bit more brighter I'm going to wash my brush again grab a little bit of the orange add in a little bit more orange down here Okay, and then clean my brush again and then just add in the red it's a little bit more of a red tip isn't it on this one, see that down there. And I'm keeping an eye on what's going on down here because while I'm keeping an eye on it, I can stop it from running. Now, some people love those runs where it all bleeds down the paper. It's again, like I always say, it's personal taste. Basically, after that, it's rinse and repeat.
Okay, now it really needs to dry and settle. So do give it a bit of time. If you end up putting the darks on, which is what we're gonna be doing next, and this hasn't dried, um, it'll all bleed together and you'll get mucky drawing, well, mucky ink work. So, big patient. Um, maybe grab a hairdresser, hairdresser, <laughs> a hairdryer, and um, give it a blitz. You can tell when it's about ready to go because the paper surface should be leveling out. It shouldn't have too much of a kink. If it's really wet, which I can see now, I can see the paper has waves in it. It's gone higher up because of the expansion and contraction of the, the water. When paper is wet, it expands. So it's expanding in certain places, and when it's dry, it's flatter. So look at the paper surface and use it as a good guide. I'll see you in a minute. I'm gonna go and have a cup of tea. Right, so fundamentally it's dry. I've got a few little bit of wet marks on there, but it's pretty good. So now I'm gonna come in with the darker shadow tones um, and then allow that to dry and then come in with the black just to crisp up the details. So that means for the darker shadow tones, I'm gonna use some purple and some green. Now, if I take a little bit of purple on there, and I'm going to use a bit of blue, so I can change the purple into different tones, and a bit of green, but anyway, that should do. So it's the same process, whereby you're putting water down where you want the darker tones to be. Now remember with this darker tones, first of all, what we'll do is we'll work up on the crabs, then we'll come into the background. So, I am gonna go for a little bit, because the crabs are orange and yellow, purple is a complementary colour. I'm gonna go in for some of the purple. Right, so that means we need to grab some water. I've got my brush. And you can see here we've got this line format going on. Actually, I'm gonna take a smaller brush. I think that's probably a bit too big. And I'm gonna paint on a little bit of water, the lines. You need that water to be wet to feed in the purple. So I'm getting that small brush. You can see how small that is with a little bit of purple on the top. And I'll feed the purple in to the water area. Now, if you wanted to, you could just take some purple like this and put it on as well. It will give you a much stronger dark purple. You see how dark that is? But because it's going onto a dry surface, it's not bleeding. The lines are staying fairly straight. If you wanted to have a little bit of a softer edge, then if you take your brush and just add in a little bit of water, you can just soften it out, soft out some of the edges. A little bit sharp. And I wanted to remember, you can always take your tissue and blow it off if you want it a little bit softer. So up here, you can take that off. They should be getting something that looks like this. We're building up more of a detailed, accurate tonal observation by gently working in some shadows and some um, patination from the shell. Okay? Keep it loose, keep it quite soft and translucent. Try, if at all possible, to add the water body first to the paper, then introduce tone. Because this specifically is important with anywhere where you've got the patination on the shell. You might find that it's hard to see where you've put the patination, therefore it can be ideal that you do one little bit at a time because you'll feel where it was and where you want to introduce it.
Okay. Right, so let's work in a little bit of the background while that's sorting itself out. Now you're going to be careful because if you put any background down here, it will bleed out. Um, and you will lose the definition, so be aware of that. You can do it and get away with it because we're going to go back in and work with that linear tone, but you do need to be aware of what you're doing. Now up here it's relatively dry, so I'm going to work up here to start off with. And I'm adding in a little bit of the water where I want the dark shade to go. I'm doing it with a brush rather than a spray because um, you need to be very careful with this or it's, it's going to end up going over your drawing that you've worked really hard on. Then I've introduced my pigment into it and the pigment should stay unless you've got your paper very heavily tilted wherever the water has kind of been placed down on the surface of your picture. And just to soften it out, increase the water content and just smooth that out. Let's work up some shadow up here. So, sponge on some diluted lilac. Also a little bit of a greeny twang down the same part, so I'm going to put in some green, add in some water. I'm keeping very really loose brush marks. You can see here, it's ducking and diving around the surface of the rock. where it gets a bit darker. If you find that it's gone too much, you can always get a tissue. And just go over the top, take it off. And it'll pick up a little bit of the pigment that you've laid down and work it in, which can be quite a nice effect. Now for here, it looks like it needs to be a little bit more red as well. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of red uh, and throw in some ready orange. So let's pick up a little bit of orange and put the orange in. If you do this too quickly, you may find that you get a bit of a mix on the surface. The trick is about how much pigment you're adding down, how much water. Okay, that's looking pretty decent. And then I forgot to do the yellow down here, haven't I? And over there, I'm quickly just gonna bring in a little bit of yellow sand. And I'm gonna be careful not to touch that shadow because it's gonna bleed and then I'll end up with a murky sand. And I'm kind of nice, a little bit of orange dappled in. Okay, you should be getting something that looks like this. Now it looks really lively because all we've been doing is using lots of primary colours plus you've got lots of bleeding. You will now need to allow this to dry again and then we go in with a fine black um, brush to, to basically give you all the details and bring a structure back into the drawing. Give it a bit of time, give it a bit of a dry quickly with a hairdryer, that'll sort out your problems and then we'll be back in a minute. If you come in with the black too quickly, it's just gonna bleed. It's a little bit of patience that's required. It's ink, it'll dry fairly quickly. Trust me. Right, so at this stage, now it's fundamentally dry. Um, you should have some lovely bleeds and effects, which look really good. I'm gonna use some black to go around it and just to crisp up the detail because it's a little bit of a blur of color. You'll be amazed at how much this is gonna change the image. To do this, I have got a few different small brushes. So I've got a number two, uh, a three over a zero, and a five over a zero, okay? So there's a few different ones. They're all synthetic hair, but we're just gonna carry on like we were doing with this, but it'll be more of a linear kind of style. Now I've got some Winsor & Newton black ink, which I'm going to pour out. I've also got some fresh water. Then I'm going to take one of my small brush. The water. Pile it back down a little bit. 
Make sure that I'm getting a nice point to the head of the brush. These brushes, they need a little bit of work. And then I'm going to go over my drawing lines, I'll make they. You should end up with something that looks like that. Now, I've just got to bring in some background definition. Okay, start drafting in some of the detail. And with this, you might want to grab a little bit of water and just fade out some of the black around things so that it makes the crabs nice and prominent. Right, and you should have something like this. So you can see that um, I've constructed the artwork really on three different levels. First of all, the drawing. Then once I did the drawing, went in with that candle, remember? Then, once the candle's put down my highlights that you can see here and here, it's worked quite efficiently, I've come in with my inks. And with the inks, I've worked light to dark. So I've built off my oranges and my yellows and my reds on the first stage allowed that to settle and dry so it didn't bleed into my darks that I've brought in which are my purples and blues and greens and at that point you can get some lovely bleeds and swirls in the surface texture then once that's been dried once it's been dried once that's dried off even um, I've come in with my black linear line drawing just to give structure to the artwork otherwise it all looks a little bit of a fuzzy coloration mess so the lines are, bring the artwork together and give it structure and a form that people can identify once they're looking at it i hope you've enjoyed it and that you're going to go and have some fun and play around with inks you can get some gorgeous effects as you can see here and i'll see you next week bye everyone